All right, we've been living in our RV full time now for almost four months. And to be honest, when we started, we didn't really know what we were doing or what we would need to make this RV more comfortable for us. But after doing this for four months now, we feel pretty confident that we know what the most important things are if you're starting out in RV life. So today we're gonna to be sharing our top five things we cannot live without in our RV. Without a doubt, the most important thing we have in this RV is this reverse camera. If I didn't have this, there's no way I would be able to drive this RV to some of the spots that we do, like this awesome view here we've got. A lot of the places you go to, there's very tight squeezes and you can't see anything because there's no rear view mirror, obviously. If you've never driven a truck or anything like that, it's really hard to see where you're going when you don't have a rear view mirror. Also, this thing is a little bit wider than the actual body and the side mirrors, you can't really see what's behind you. So having this reverse camera has been hands down the most important thing we've got in this RV. All right, we're gonna try and back out of here using only the reverse camera. Most of the time, that's all I need. Mandy will sometimes get out and like stand right behind the RV and just put a hand up or something if I'm gonna hit something, but this is pretty much all I use to reverse and this is a pretty tight squeeze here, but I think we should be right. So when we first moved into the RV, we had no idea that you couldn't drink the water. Well, that maybe you shouldn't drink the water. We just filled up the tanks. We drank from out of the taps for about a week and we got really sick. We actually, we didn't know it was the water for a while because we had a big family get together and we were like drinking a lot and going out to eat and we were tired. So we thought maybe that's what it was. And then one day Mandy just turned around and said, I think it's the water. And that's when it clicked. And we sort of figured out that you maybe shouldn't be trusting not only your tanks, but where the water supply is coming from. So we knew that we had to figure something out. We were filling up five gallon jugs from Walmart, but that gets really annoying as well until we found this solution, which is the water drop water filtration system. And what this is just basically a five liter jug where we can fill it up from the tap, any city water, and we're good to go after a couple of minutes. It filters out all the bad stuff and we can drink it. We can take it with us if we wanna go down the beach or something, we can store it in the fridge so it stays cold, but we usually just keep it up here. And now we've been using this to drink out of and we haven't been sick and it's been amazing. So this electric water dispenser is fully rechargeable. It runs off a battery and it has a one key control. The countertop water dispenser gives you an experience beyond traditional pitchers and dispensers, faster filtration, more precise filter materials and effortless operation. The water filter's premium carbon block filter materials offers high accuracy, excellent absorption and zero carbon leakage. It effectively reduces impurities, enhancing the purity and taste of the drinking water. So this inbuilt battery actually lasts for 30 days off one charge, which helps us to save time without having to charge it all the time. The water contacting components are made from BPA free material, ensuring that every drop of water is clean and safe for consumption. It's delicious. So as I said, this is absolutely perfect for us because we can keep it in the fridge and keep it cool and we don't have to worry anymore about getting sick from drinking the water out of the RV. And we also don't have to like find Walmarts every few days to fill up. It's been great. I don't think we could live without a water filtration system like this. So if you wanna get your hands on one of these yourself, if you're in an RV, we'll leave the link down below for you. All right, so the next most important thing, believe it or not, when we started living in the RV about three months ago, we didn't have any experience and we had no idea that you can't use any of the power outlets unless you're plugged into shore power, which is very rare. The only reason we would be plugged into shore power is if we're at like a full hookup site, which costs about 60, 70, 80, sometimes even a hundred dollars. 
So most of the time we're just boondocking like this and after a while we figured we have to get a generator and this thing has been awesome. It's a VTO Man 1800 solar generator and it's actually worked really good for us. It can be charged three ways, either using solar, you can plug it into your 12 volt, which is like your cigarette lighter while you're driving, which is pretty much how we do it most of the time. If we're driving more than two or three hours, it'll pretty much get a full charge. Uh, otherwise we use the solar when we're camping for more than like a few days. Every morning I'll just get up and I'll put this outside with the solar and we'll usually get a full charge if you leave it out there for like eight hours but a couple hours a day is enough and it'll get you enough charge to keep using everything. Um, otherwise if you are plugged in you can just plug it straight into like a power socket and use the 110 volt. We can charge our computers here using the USB-C inputs so that's great. All of our electronics like our phones and our camera we charge with it and we also plug our modem into this. It stays in there full time pretty much. And then anything else like accessories that you have that just need to charge we can use this and it also has this place where you can plug in cables and jumpstart the RV if we run out of battery. Thankfully, we've never had to do that. We actually haven't bought cables for it. So if we did run out of battery, we'd be screwed. <laughs> but that's good to know that we have that in case. So yeah, if you're planning on doing any kind of off-grid camping like us, then you need a generator and having something that charges three different ways has been perfect. And it lasts like a really long time. As you can see, it's at about 45% there. If we use that all day, charging our computers, phones, using the internet, it'll probably use like 5% maybe. So as long as you're putting it in the sun for a couple of hours every day, you'll never run out. All right, so like everybody, one of the reasons we love RVing is because we can be out in nature and a little bit disconnected, but we don't like to be totally disconnected. And that's mainly because Obviously everything we do for work is online. We have to upload these videos, uh, edit. We've got lots of emails we need to take care of. And uh, for the first month we were in the RV, we didn't have any Wi-Fi. We just had our phones, but we can't actually hotspot our phones in North America because we have unlimited plans using Olafly, which is great to have unlimited data on your phone. It's awesome, but they don't let you hotspot. So when we're in Canada, we actually found we were looking for a bunch of different Wi-Fi services and the most obvious one was Starlink, but we saw a lot of kind of negative reviews about Starlink, just as far as if you are somewhere that's pretty built up, like a city, especially on the east coast of America, it's gonna drop out, it's not gonna give you very good service. So we found an alternative, which is Maple Wi-Fi, and we ordered uh, one of their modems, they sent it out to us, it took a couple of weeks, but we got it. And this is it. This is a tiny little modem that they send out. It can be charged using a battery. So we plug it into this generator here. Um, we can either just like leave it plugged in all day and it'll stay on and keep running. Or you can put the battery in the back here. Battery goes in there and you can charge it up. And if we wanna like work down the beach or we wanna take it, we can even take it to a cafe or a restaurant and we have Wi-Fi with us anywhere we wanna go. So how it basically works is it runs off the 4G LTE system, which is what like phones run off. And it'll sort through all of the different service providers in the area and pick up whoever's giving the best signal. So usually it's like AT&T or Verizon and it will just pick up whoever's giving the strongest signal, but you can change it so that it only picks up certain providers. And that's sometimes good because when it's jumping between providers, you might not get like a steady signal, but it's been really good for us. Um, we haven't had any issues getting service, mainly because we're always pretty close to like a town. And I find in the United States, like you're never really that far off the beaten track. Sometimes we'll pull in somewhere and there's only one or two bars on our phone or there's no bars. And so we know that the Wi-Fi is probably not gonna work and we'll move and go somewhere with just like a little bit better service, but it's been really good. And they offer an unlimited monthly service. There's no contracts at all. It's about 159 Canadian dollars a month and that's for unlimited data. It is tailored towards Canadians. It's a Canadian company. That's why it's called Maple Wi-Fi, but it actually works across all of North America. So the United States as well. We've been using it pretty much only in the United States and it hasn't dropped out at all. So when you sign up, all you have to do is order one of these 
and they'll send it out to you and it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. Um, plug it in, they'll give you all the details on how to set it up, which is really easy. You just need a password, that's it. And then um, you're good to go and you have unlimited Wi-Fi across all of North America. So this is not only for people in RVs, but maybe if you're traveling for business or um, you've got like a cottage and you want to take your Wi-Fi there with you for a weekend away, Maple Wi-Fi has been great and we definitely recommend it. Okay, so one of the hardest things that anyone who lives in an RV will tell you is buying things online when you're in an RV is a nightmare because, well, unless you're like really good at planning, which we're not, we don't know where we're gonna be next week, let alone three weeks from now. Like sometimes when you order something, it says, you know, five to seven business days, which could be two weeks. Like we had to order this modem, this generator, all the upgrades we've done to this thing, we've had to order online. And we found it was nearly impossible to get it right until we discovered traveling mailbox. We got it. <laughs> Yay. This traveling mailbox thing, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it's a digital mailbox where you get things sent to an actual physical location. They send you a notification once it's received, they'll send you like a picture of the item. They'll hold it for you for up to 30 days. Um, if you get mail, they can forward it for you. They can forward packages for you using FedEx or UPS or USPS. Basically they'll send you a quote of how much it's gonna cost to get it forwarded to you. So what we do is when we get something into our mailbox, We'll wait till we get like two or three items and they can consolidate it for you. It costs $5 to consolidate. Then you get a quote of how much it's gonna to cost to be sent by FedEx or UPS or whatever. And then we just decide where we wanna be in like a few days. Cause it usually comes within three to four days with FedEx and it's been really good. And it's only $10 a month. So we get all of our mail now gets sent to the one place. And when we think we need it or when there's enough there that we can get it all sent together. We'll pick a spot where we're going to be. We either use a US post office, which you can actually get things sent to using general delivery, or we'll just pick an RV park and go and stay there for a couple of nights and make sure that it lines up with when we're going to get our package. So I think we're going to keep using this virtual mailbox for a long time, even when we're traveling overseas, because it just holds on to stuff for us. This has been really good for us. So if you're interested in using virtual mailbox, check out the link down below. So that's it. That's pretty much our five most important things we have in our RV that we cannot live without. If you have any suggestions for things you think might make it easier for us, or if you think we could upgrade any of these items, let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.